out your hearts. Um, thanks for uh, stopping by the studio today and hanging out with me. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm excited to have you here. Um, we're going to make a Frankenstein journal, so that's going to be way fun. But um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Katharina Giglio, and everybody calls me Kat. My husband Don Diggison and I created this channel about three years ago, so there's lots of videos for you to watch. And we want to thank you in advance of of all your subscriptions, your, um, your shares, your comments, your wonderful comments. Love chatting you up. And um, for all of your likes, your thumbs up, um, and subscriptions. So thank you so much for that. And we've been, we've, I mentioned this in a couple of other videos that we lost our livelihood for the year due to COVID. So no teaching classes, no gallery shows, all of that stuff has stopped. So if you'd like to support our channel, um, Don had, has created a tip jar, woohoo. We wanna thank you so much for all your tips from the last video. We really appreciate it, every little bit um, helps us. And um, it's just, it's wonderful. Um, it's just wonderful to have your support. And then there are two other ways that you can support us. You can uh, click on our Amazon links and uh, purchase one of our recommended supplies. Or if you buy from Amazon all the time, you can use our link to go there and they will kick back a few pennies. And like I said, every, every bit helps. And the last way is to support my art, to buy a piece of art from the gallery, 142 BIS. You can find that information right on my site. Don, I'll put that on the screen. Um, there's an online gallery and there's also lots of art that's in the store and the gallery um, and Meg would be happy to um, to do a FaceTime tour with you so there's all that so let's make a Frankenstein journal okay so here's my Frankenstein journal um, it's really yummy um, Meg gave me this book Meg represents me at 142 BIS gallery and she gave me this book years ago and um, I just couldn't get over it. I just love the cover and uh, the the, uh, the spine and everything and believe it or not this is what was in it so this is how thick it was I mean it was tiny it was so thin and all this fabric was like you know just sloppy and just hanging there so I thought it would be really fun to make uh, an altered book out of it and that's what I did so um, today we're, I'm going to show you how you can make one of these you don't even need a cool book you can make it completely out of cardboard we're going to make a brand new book and um, I'm going to share that technique with you right now so I'm calling it my Frankenstein journal it's actually a botanical journal it's a string journal so if you're not familiar with that um, string journals are very versatile um, and I'm going to go over all the hardware and everything with you and um, in the next video of how I created the cover which I love I love love it this old piece of scrap here um, and so the inside is a string journal and I used bolts and nuts to hold it together and um, it has leather and it's got holes marked in it cut into it so that the uh, strings hold the papers in place so it the versatility is wonderful because you can simply pull the page out and then work on it and then poke it back in which which I absolutely um, love love and I know you will too um, so it's got great flexibility and I started working on a piece I'm not finished with this but this is going to go in here and um, it depends on how much I love this um, whether I send it to the gallery or not so anyway so that we're getting started on that so we are going to make this journal out of cardboard because you might not have a cool book like this um, and even if you do have a cool book like this you can follow the same technique so how easy is this to make a book about the same size as my uh, French uh, book my uh, my Frankenstein book um, all you need is a mixed media pad you need the board from the back now I save all these and if you don't you have to start saving them because they come in so handy for so many things and um, so we're going to use it to make our book covers and um, and to make the spines. We're gonna make a brand new book and 
It's super easy. I can't wait to share it with you. Um, but let me tell you this. The first thing is cardboard is not treated like paper. In, in the old days, all paper was acidic, but it's not any longer. So the paper that you get in a mixed media tablet or any other kinds of papers really are not as, as well, some of them might be, but most of them aren't acidic. Um, but cardboard is generally acidic. And I had a wonderful viewer who asked me this question, you know, what do you do? And I have to say, I'm very sorry that I forgot to explain to you that I do cover it with clear gesso. So anytime you see me using uh, a board, uh, a cardboard in work, I have covered it with clear gesso or gel medium or something to give it, to keep it from, um, the acidity from, from that, that process of acidification. How's that? Okay. So I've already cut one piece and I have a spine uh, ready. Actually, we might use this spine. So the offcuts I used for the spine and the size is um, roughly uh, 14 by nine and three quarters ish. You can make your book any size you want to. You can make it with small pieces of cardboard and make a Frankenstein book and use your nuts and bolts with it. Um, I just thought this would be so fun to use with the leather um, to, to create this kind of uh, book with you know a chunkier look and so different from anything else. Uh, so I have already put a clear gesso on front and back and for those people that think cardboard is really hard to cut It is if you're using scissors It's super easy if you use an exacto knife and that's what I've done here I simply scored it and now it's going to be super easy to cut and We'll have our book covers ready. We'll have the spine ready and we'll put it all together Alrighty then, we've got both book covers and the spine. And what I'm judging is that we're gonna be able to put maybe three punches in this one, which will be fine because I don't even know what this book is gonna be yet. We haven't even, my muse hasn't even told me, so I don't know. Um, so, but that's fine. Um, I like using the off cut with it. And um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna marry all of these pieces together. Okay, so none of my book binding uh, cloth is um, large enough for a book this size. So I've completely abandoned that and I'm just going to use a piece of linen that I folded, I ironed and folded, and I absolutely loved this top piece um, and with the little scallop these actually it actually came from a pair of pants so you know look at your clothing before you send it to a thrift store um, maybe even before you mend it if you you know sometimes I think well wouldn't that make a great uh, cover for a book or something like that so what we're gonna do is we're going to glue this down and that's gonna pull these pieces together and I want it to be really tight and we're going to use PVA and I want the end to match up right here and as you can see I notch the side so it won't be bulky there you can even press it so that it's even better than this this is basically fold and we did a little bit of pressing but I want the edge to come up so that the, the lace part is going to come up over the book okay I am using PVA and oops stay bad book um, I'm using PVA to put this down and make sure you start with a dry brush if you don't use a dry brush then your fabric is going to look awful and sometimes it depends on really the fabric that you use but it, it might not even recover I mean sometimes I've seen some fabrics just absolutely stain with water so badly that it just it doesn't look good at all Okay, so we're going to start here at the end and in the, in the parts that I need to, I'm going to be able to see now exactly how much farther I need to go. And if your book wiggles on you, just put your, your cover wiggles on you, just put your hand down on it and force it down. 
Okay, so we're gonna put this down here. And, and I'm using PVA for this because it's a, it's a PVA is a typical book binding um, glue and it's definitely archival. Um, now, if you're just making books for fun or for yourself and you're not worried about it, um, then you don't have to be concerned with making something archival. But if you are a, a, uh, a professional artist, of course, then you want to think about that. And I, I, also, I didn't always think about it um, when I started my, my journaling process. I just thought, oh, I'm just journaling for myself. But in talking with other artists, I realized, you know, somebody may want to see those one day. So maybe I should consider that I should take better care of them. So I have been working very hard to make sure that everything that I do is archival. Okay, so I've got this going here and I'm going to give this a chance to dry and then we're going to flip this over. Okay, I've turned it inside out. This is getting, it's almost dry. It's really close to it's getting dry. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, PVA takes much longer to dry, I think, um, than gel medium or anything else. And I'm just using a piece of brown wrapping paper. Um, I always save things, you know, pieces that we have framed or whatever. I always save pieces that, you know, paper that's rolled up, that's wrapped up. That's what I used in this. I got this in, um, it was in Shepherds in London and my papers came rolled in it and I just loved it. It just looked so gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to use this um, paper and I'm not going to worry about the wrinkles. We're talking Frankenstein here. We're putting it together with nuts and bolts. So we're going to um, just recycle, upcycle, you know, and, uh, and, and make do and make something absolutely beautiful out of the mundane. So the very first thing that we're going to do is I've got it cut pretty much to size um, and I can feel where my where my uh, cardboard ends and um, I want it to go right to the end because we're just going to use um, our, our uh, sanding sponge to, um, to, to clean off the edges so we won't have to cut it or any of that stuff and I'm just going to fold it back just as long as you have a bit of an edge uh, you know, to uh, to sand off. You, you don't want to cut yourself short. Okay, I'm starting with the spine. This is a dry brush, remember. It's always the best way to go. Uh, I'm going to start here in the middle. And now I'm going to put the paper back down. And I'm going to smooth it out. Now you can see where the edges are. And now it's going to stay put. And now we can go back. And it's always, I find that it's much easier to just do segments at a time. Now you can glue it any way you want to. You know, it's your journal, it's your book. You get to, you get to do what you want. But, um, but this is how I like to do it. And you can use any kind of wrapping paper, any paper that you want. I'm just using brown paper because, like I said, I'm not really sure what this is going to be. I have an idea that it might be that perhaps we would use it for some slow stitching cloths. So I'm not sure, but we'll see. Okay, I've got a really good connection here. If you don't like the wrinkles, you can smooth them out. Um, I know they're gonna just, they'll disappear after a while. The paper and the glue will come together in a nice little marriage. And so now I'm just gonna take my uh, sanding block and I'm just going to edge it. And 
I keep sanding sponges in different grits. Um, fine, coarse, medium. Um, because you just never know. Now this is this is probably a medium grit. It's not too bad. Not too too crazy. And I would use um, a grit that's got you know a really coarse grit for using for metals and things like that. Okay, I'm just gonna scrape all this off. It's gonna meet the edge perfectly. And then we're gonna be able to collage the cover. And we're gonna do that in the next video. This is a two-part video. This is gonna take us a while to finish this string journal. So. Okay, so the book cover and spine are starting to come together and they are drying. And here's an opportunity. Um, so, I meant to put this on the inside. So when you make a mistake like that, I want you to think about the fact that you can always embellish. So when we come back uh, for the next video, I'm gonna be decorating this and deciding what it's going to be. Obviously, this is an opportunity for embellishment here. And so we're gonna do something really fun with that. So I want you to think about that, you know, the perfectionism, you know, we've talked about perfectionism and how it absolutely, you know, destroys creativity. So just look at it and say, oh, I made a mistake here. What can we do to make this look fabulous? So that's what we're going to do. Now, while we wait for that to dry, um, let's talk about the pages. Now, the pages I made for the other journal were from Fabriano sheets that were 22 by 30, which is huge. And I've showed those to you before. I think we used them in the master board uh, video. Anyway, so they had to be cut down. And um, so we got, we have to cut, this is one of the half sheets. And so we're gonna cut this up. And you can make, you can make your sheets out of anything you want. Um, but remember, they're going to have some wear and tear on them because you're gonna be pulling it in and out of the string. So you want something that's gonna be substantial. You don't want something that's just gonna rip apart easily. Um, so, and especially if you're gonna be working on it and then putting it back in the journal and then taking it out. So you have to think about that. So I simply rough edged these. I, I did a nice decal edge. And there's two ways you can do it. You know, you can use your ruler and rip it. Um, you can also put the water down, which is what I showed you in that other video about just taking a brush and dipping it in water and then um, ripping it apart. Now, Fabriano is super hard to tear. This isn't a cold press or a hot press paper. This is rough dried. It's just made and then set out to dry. So it takes a bit of work to not only get a nice edge on it, but to, um, to rip and tear it into pieces. So I've got three pages and I wanna make one more. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a ruler to cut this, cut this down. So. Now the thing with the book is that when you put your pages inside the book, they are going to pull forward. Okay, now doesn't that come out pretty? I just love the way that looks. So let me share that with you. So they're gonna pull forward. Oops, that's the piece we're working on. So see how they come forward? So they're going to be, so what you're going to have to do is decide how, what size. And don't be concerned if you make them and you think that they fit the book and then they start falling out. You can always take them out and cut them down to size. So don't freak out if that happens. Now I'm using really soft leather. It's what I had. You can use any kind of leather that you have and you can, you can see in the book how this pulls. Now every string journal I've ever seen that's done this way is gonna pull like this. It's the nature of the of the, uh, the beast, if you will, um, and it's really okay. It's the way it's supposed to be. Leather will give. Now, if you don't wanna use leather, you could use some other kind of, um, of material, a pleather or something like that. And basically, you wanna have a good inch to put 
your hardware. So this piece I'm going to put on the front and this piece on the inside. Or maybe we'll do it the other way. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that one out. Depends on what it looks like, right? Because that might be kind of cool. So, um, so one is going to go, there's going to be one on either side here. And I don't want the holes that I'm going to put into the leather to be too far down. You want them to be about, you know, in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and with my um, Prismacolor, I'm going to mark dots where I want to punch the holes. And I'm just going to use a hole punch to do that. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. So I'm just going to put the guides in here because this is where they're going to be. And I'm going to use about this, do about the same here. One, two, three. Now you can make your spine much bigger and make a much bigger book. Um, the only problem with it is that it's really going to fall forward, remember, and it's, it, you run the risk of ripping the leather out. So you want to think about that. Okay, so I'm using a hole punch. I'm going to punch through here and we're going to punch through the board using this hole punch. Now, I wish I could tell you what it is, but I buy them at estate sales and garage sales, yard sales, things like that. And I buy all different kinds of sizes. So I'm not really sure what size it is, but um, all you want to do is make sure that it's going to be about the same size as you need for your string. Now, this is old kitchen string and it's really thick. You can't just use plain string because it will rip out. Well, you can if you're using, if you're making a small book, which, you know, I think we should make some mini string books, don't you? So I'm just going to punch where I put the, um, the Prismacolor. Just punch through it and it makes a really nice little hole. Okay, so the cardboard and the fabric together made a really tough combination. So I've had to use an awl and do it the old fashioned way, which if you don't have a punch that will go through your book, your book board or your cardboard, whatever you're using for your Frankenstein book, um, then you can go back to doing this. And it's, I'm simply using an old book, which I love using. Um, and then I've punched through, and this is my biggest awl. Now awls come in all different kinds of sizes. So I've got really thin ones, fatter ones, and they work really well to push through all the way. And then what I'm going to do is just take a pair of scissors and I'm going to make that a little bit larger so that my, uh, my nut and bolt will fit through. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay, so the old fashioned way, just mangle it. <laughs> um, you could probably drill it too, I suppose. I didn't even think about that because I didn't do it with the other one. It was just really easy to punch through it and to uh, use my awl. So I'm just going to poke this in here just like I did with this one and just screw it in. Okay, so now I'm fitting. I punched holes in either side of the um, of the leather and um, and I'm just going to fit that fit the screw through the holes now you know we just went to the hardware store checked out what was there liked these I thought they looked really cool and very Frankensteinish and um, decided to use these now you can use anything you want they actually make in fact, we have this on our Amazon links. These are specifically used with leather. So if you want those, and they come in all different sizes. So you could just go on the link and get that if you want, if you prefer. It doesn't really matter. Um, as long as it's just fun and kind of chunky and, you know, looks like Frankenstein. Okay, now I'm just gonna screw the, uh, what, did you, what did you call these bolts? Or are these the nuts? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> nuts. These are nuts. Okay. Screwing the nuts on. <laughs> and uh, I just love the way they look. I think they're so cool. Okay. Now we're going to do the end. Okay. 
Okay, I'm using just plain old kitchen twine for the string. And you can, you can use all different kinds of things. You don't have to use this, you could use lots of other materials. And you can, uh, you can just you know, figure that out as you go along um, and, and play with it and see what works well for you. So the way I figured out the size was simply to lay it here and to just bring it over and to see where I was going to tie it. And I thought I would tie it right in the middle here and um, then cut it. And um, now, because this is so thick, I had to dip it in water um, to get it to, to go through. Um, and I found it was really too big than any of my needles, which is fine. But then just have to push it through the, the hole. And this side too. And then I just tied it off. And I based this string journal on my naturalist notebook um, journal, which was an antique string journal. And I don't know if you know that these string journals were used um, to in libraries to hold periodicals and um, so they would put they would take the old magazine or newspaper out and just fill it in and you know just consecutively so when they got a new one they would take the old one out and just throw it away now you don't want it to be too tight but you want to have um, you want it to have a little bit of tension and I just waited until the end and cut those off. Okay, so I have all the strings in, and now I'm just gonna poke the pages in. There's one, and two. We're gonna put three in here. But you can put a lot more. I just want to give you an idea of what it looks like when you have the pages in. So now you've got these in, you can put smaller pieces in here, which is what I did with this. So I put mixed media papers, and uh, this is a parchment paper and handmade paper. So you can you can just you can just really have a great time making this journal, I think. Just uh, with a smattering of supplies of things that you probably already have on hand and make another Frankenstein journal. I can't wait to decorate it. Well, we're almost at chow for now. And um, I really hope that you create a Frankenstein journal or a botanical journal or whatever you want to fill it with. I hope you have fun making a string journal and uh, enjoy it. And next time when we come back, uh, we're going to be decorating it. I'm going to show you how I did this. We're going to decorate this whole thing and we're going to decide what's going on with this and we're going to film all the collaging um, on camera. So I can't wait to see you then. So until then, ciao for now. Thank you.